I will be providing numerous handouts throughout this course. These handouts are an integral and valuable part of the course. Be sure to download the handouts. They were designed using evidence-based techniques and will save you time and effort. He's definitely speaking a lot more since we've last spoken. Yes. He's definitely speaking a lot more and I think a lot of it is just like you said, just more attention on him, but the tricks and tips that you've given us have definitely helped di like come up with different ways to get to, to get him to speak. Yes. Why should SLPs know grade level vocabulary? Sometimes as therapists, we can find it hard to know what a child should be able to do when all we see are students with delays, disorders, and disabilities. Even if you aren't based in a school setting, but work with school age clients, knowing grade level vocabulary can still guide your treatment decisions. This is an example of a page from the kindergarten grade level vocabulary. Note the grade level vocabulary word, our target word, definition, and then I have columns for data collection. Remember the words that are highlighted in green are listed as high priority words to teach using Andrew B. Miller's book, Words Worth Teaching, Closing the Vocabulary Gap. Be sure to keep adding to this list when you collaborate with teachers or gather additional educational relevant vocabulary words. These blocks are an example of an activity I incorporate to teach vocabulary. I buy wooden blocks at arts and crafts stores. One block has the target vocabulary word. Another block has the definition of the word, and the third block has a visual illustration of the word. The children can roll the blocks and match the definition and pictures of the word to the target vocabulary word. I also use the circles for matching antonyms and synonyms. They also have dry erase blocks out too, that I really like those as well. Due to the variety and the vast amount of vocabulary words, I organize my vocabulary words by color coding by grade level. For example, first grade is blue, second grade is yellow, third grade is green, and so forth. Then I place my grade level index cards, flash cards, and color coded pencil bags. For example, I put all of my first grade vocabulary cards in a blue pencil bag. Then I place all the pencil bags in a binder. That way they're easily accessible. I can just grab them quickly and efficiently. These are the five most frequently used prefixes and suffixes. I refer to them as the big five. You can see that UN un is the most frequently used prefix, S E S is the most frequently used suffix. This sheet is organized as follows. The first column is the five most frequently used prefixes and suffixes. The next column is the definition. And the remaining columns is for data collection. I refer to this as my documentation friendly format. Be sure to use it in a sheet protector and then you can use dry erase markers. It saves time and paper. This is a list of the 20 most frequently used prefixes and suffixes in third through ninth grade, and they are listed in the order of frequency. This list is in your download folder as well. Note that the first four account for 97% of prefix and suffix words in printed school English. I will refer to that later on. Now we're going to talk about prefix activities. Both of these activities reinforces the meaning of the prefixes. On the far left, this is a handout, so just print it out, have the children cut on the horizontal line, but not into the word prefix. They will put glue under the word prefix and glue it onto a piece of paper. The front of the flap has the prefix. The back of the flap, they can write what it means and then they could generate words with that prefix. Then the next picture, the red circle with the red diagonal line, that's a sign for no or not. And you can write in the prefixes that mean no or not. 
Encourage the child to make their own visual representation. Marzano found that we have a deeper understanding of the meaning of words when children generate their own visual representation. There are 15 words with prefixes and roots that are part of over 15,000 words. So these are prefixes and root words that will be used and encountered frequently. This is a list of the 15 power words. This handout divides the word into prefixes and root words. The prefixes and root words are defined as well. You can use any of the previously mentioned activities to teach the prefixes and root words that are listed in this handout. For example, matching prefixes and root words with meanings using blocks, create flashcards, make the build a word activity using different colored index cards. Use the paper plates to match prefixes and root words to their meanings. Use the prefix root word suffix template. Make a prefix dictionary. Make a root word dictionary. The list goes on and on.